Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. Today we're going to talk about two new graphics cards, one from AMD and one from NVIDIA, that may have been a little bit of a surprise with their release over the last 7 to 10 days or so. The first one we're going to talk about is the new AMD Radeon 7790. We have one here from Sapphire. This is an overclocked model, uh, Dual X branded, uh, runs at higher clock speeds, that kind of thing. So the 7790 is unique in that it uses a completely new GPU. It's based on Sea Islands uh, and it is the Bonaire codename GPU. GPU. It's the same architecture though, it's the same graphics core next architecture that we've saw on the 7770, the 7850, 7900 series, all of those cards use the same thing. But this is a new ASIC. It is uh, 2.08 billion transistors. It's a little bit uh, bigger than the 7700 series and a little bit smaller than the 7850 series in terms of specifications. It has 14 compute units for a total of 896 stream processors. It uses a 128-bit 128 128-bit memory bus with one gig of memory uh, running on uh, at 6.0 gigahertz. Um, the main feature change with this GPU is the inclusion of an updated version of PowerTune with Boost. Uh, the, the clock speed of, of the 7790 is rated at 1 gigahertz, and some of the overclock models go up to about 1075 or so. Uh, but the, the new version of Boost doesn't really increase what you can get above those clock speeds. It's more that they are enabling uh, better more granularity in the voltages and frequencies between their, their regular state and the highest end clock boost state. So in terms of end user, what you'll see different with the updated version of PowerTune, you won't see a whole lot more, a whole lot change, but the GPU will be able to be more efficient and you'll actually be able to monitor those clock states in between the regular base clock and whatever they use as the boost clock. But AMD is doing things a little bit differently still. You know, one gigahertz is the rated boost frequency, but it's not going to go anywhere above that unless you do manual overclocking. It's a little bit different than what NVIDIA has done with their uh, boost technology since the introduction of the Kepler series. The 7790 is going to run about $150 to $160 for a reference model and then $160 to $170 for the overclocked version. Uh, before we get into performance, let's introduce the second new card. This is the GeForce GTX 650 Ti Boost. Um, it is uh, very, very similar to the GTX 650 Ti that we saw before, only as the name implies, this one actually introduces the Kepler boost technology, GPU boost technology, onto the GPU itself. There are some changes here. It is still a 768 CUDA core part. Uh, the um, original 650 Ti ran at 925 megahertz. The base clock of this version is 980 megahertz, so a, a, a pretty healthy increase there. But the boost frequency, the typical boost frequency, is now 1033 megahertz. Other big change here is on the memory side. Instead of 128-bit memory controller, this is 192-bit. It goes from 1 gig of frame buffer to 2 gigabytes of frame buffer, and the memory clock speed goes from 5.4 all the way up to 6 gigahertz. That actually introduces 60% uh, more memory bandwidth on the 650 Ti Boost as opposed to the original 650 Ti. Uh, it's still the same GPU, 2.54 billion transistors, so bigger than what you have on the 7790. Uh, and if we compare power consumption, typical TDPs, the 650 Ti with boost is going to run 40 watts or so higher than what we have on the 7790. What is important to know is the pricing. The, uh, the reference version of the 2 gigabyte models of the GTX 650 Ti boost are going to be 169 bucks, which puts these two cards, the 7790 and the 650 Ti Boost, head to head against each other in, in, in the current pricing on the marketplace. So if we look at performance between these two cards, it actually doesn't look that great for the 7790. The 7790 was the first card out and we compared it to the original 650 Ti and uh, 7770 and the 7850, and the 7790 fell right in between the 7770 and 7850 as you would expect, but it kind of leaned a little bit more towards the 7850. That was good news for AMD. New part, more efficient, a little bit better performance, uh, more uh, efficient on the power tune and the boost clocking, that kind of stuff. That was great news. With today's release of NVIDIA's GTX 650 Ti Boost 2 gigabyte model, um, the performance picture changes a lot. The 650 Ti Boost actually competes very handily and, and beats, in some cases, the Radeon HD 7850, uh, which is 10 to $15 more expensive than both of these cards right now. So, Summary and conclusion of what we have here today is, is that the, the 650 Ti Boost 
kind of came in and took the great story that was the 7790 from AMD and turned it around a little bit. This is obviously kind of a reactionary part. The original 650 Ti didn't have boost technology on it. This one does, and it helps out, enables the, uh, the clock speeds to go a little bit higher. We get better gaming performance, a lot higher memory bandwidth with the changes they made to the GPU. And I think if we had to pick between one of these two cards after today's release, the GTX 650 Ti Boost definitely takes the win there. I, of course, encourage you guys to go to PCPer.com and read the full review of both of these cards that are posted on the website as of today. See the benchmarks, see how they all compare. There are, there are differences, some wins, some lose in different cases, and then look at the power consumption and pricing and see how it all changes. Uh, the last thing I'll mention, I guess, is that both of these cards are going to come with uh, game bundle pack-ins of different kinds. The 7790 will come with uh, Bioshock Infinite, uh, through some retailers and through some uh, uh, adding card partners, so make sure you check for that. And then the 650 Ti Boost will include that $75 in uh, credit for those free-to-play games, World of Tanks, Planet Side 2, uh, and there's another one in there as well. So depending on what particular gaming model you're after or what particular games you're interested in, that kind of pack-in on these cards that are $160, $170 could actually change your opinion quite dramatically. So again, make sure you check out the full review at PCPer.com. I'm Ryan Shrout. Thanks for watching.